In this video, I will be 3D printing a model which has a little bit of articulation to it. If you want to follow along, I'm using the latest in the LK series of longer 3D printers. In this case, the longer LK4X. This is a pretty affordable printer for anyone just looking to get into 3D printing without having to spend an arm and a leg for one. The LK4X is pretty much the newest version in the LK line, and it's actually a pretty good printer if I say so myself. One nice thing about it is that it came almost completely pre-assembled, so it's pretty easy to set up. All you have to do is connect a few cables and set up the leveling for the bed. One nice thing about this printer is that it has an auto-leveling feature, but you can also still do this manually if you want. Before I show you the process, I do want to let you know that all the links you need are in the video description. Ok, so with that out of the way, let's get to it. So for this print, I'm going to be using PLA material for printing, and I will also be using Cura to set up the settings for the 3D print. Ultimaker Cura comes with the printer and it's pretty easy to set up as well. So what I wanted to do here was to print a figure which can also be posed. I think that giving articulation to a 3D print makes it more dynamic since you can move some of the parts and pose your figure as opposed to just having a static 3D print. In this case, I will be printing a Tide Tasmanian Tiger figure. I got this model from Thingiverse, which is also a great resource if you just want to start printing stuff without having to make the models yourself. So I downloaded the file, but since I want this model to have some articulation, I did make some changes to the model itself. In this case, I used ZBrush to make those changes. What I did here in ZBrush was to separate the model, such as the arms, the head, and the torso, so I could set it up for printing in parts. If you're looking to print models with articulation, or very large models, it's very much recommended that you make your print in parts. So I separated the model and made some minor adjustments here and there, but the most important part was to make some kind of socket for the joint which will allow for articulation once this is printed. I printed out a few different tests to see what type of articulation would work best for this model, and in the end I opted to go with the simple ball joint setup. This is a simple ball which connects to a socket. I also tested how well it worked with paint on it. In this case, it did pretty well. Once I had made that decision on what type of joint I would use, it was time to set up the model to work with this. Basically, what I did was import the ball joint parts as a subtool in ZBrush, aligned it to the different sections of the model, and unified them using Merge and Dynamesh. By the way, if anyone wants to use this specific model, I have a link to it in the video description. When all was done, I exported the files as .stl file types. Once I had the model ready, it was obviously time to print this bad boy. But first, let's take a look at some of the settings I used in Cura for this print. Keep in mind that I did do some tests at different scales just to see what the settings would do at different sizes. For this print, I wanted it to be slightly large, but when playing with the settings, I did first print some parts at a smaller scale and lower quality settings as well. What I was trying to test by doing this was what types of support, if any, I would need in order to print the parts effectively. As I mentioned, I'm using Ultimaker Cura to set up the bottle for printing. Once I was ready to print the final parts, I decided to print each part separately since they do get a little bit large and use a good chunk of the printing space. Here's what this ended up looking in Cura at a size set to 160% larger than the original size at which I imported the models. Links are in the video description for the settings I used and the actual files in case all you want to do is download and hit print. Basically, I used mainly default settings. In this case, I kept the wall thickness for all the parts 2.8. For the infill density, I did change it to about 12 for the legs, torso, and head, but I set that to about 20 for the arms, since I wanted those to be a bit more sturdy. I also ended up printing all the pieces with some kind of support. Basically, I set generate support to be enabled, and then added some shapes where I didn't want support pieces to show up. In some of the earlier tests, I found it that it was really difficult to remove some of the support pieces if they utilized a lot of space. This is why I decided to set the supports to be relatively thin as this would make it easier to remove after the print. Alright, so here's a little bit of a time lapse of the parts printing in action. It's important to note 
that I essentially printed these at standard quality. You can always use higher settings through Cura to print at higher resolutions. Obviously, the higher the resolution, the more time you have to wait for the print to be done. Now, the LK4X does have a resume feature, so you can always pause printing and resume at a later time. All in all, I had a really good time making this print and trying out this printer in particular. Here's another print I did which I also got from Thingiverse. If you're watching this and are interested in 3D printing, I would really recommend this printer. It's easy to set up and once you have it going, it's fairly easy to manage. You do need to adjust the leveling once in a while, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with the prints I have gotten so far and I will absolutely continue to print more things with it. As I mentioned earlier, all links you need for this particular print can be found in the video description. The Cura files are specific to this printer, but you can also do the setup yourself if you're using a different printer. Ok everyone, if you have any questions about this printer in particular, fire away in the comment section and I will do my best to answer those. Thank you all for watching this video and I hope to see you in a future video.